And I was like, I want to play something that when they're countering or killing or whatever, all my stuff, yep. that I know that at any point in time, I'm just going to blow up the board and go off. That's it. And that's what happened. That was the beginning of my love of Dredge. But I've always, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Golgari anything. Fair enough. <laughs> Mine was when I, uh, when Golgari Grey Troll was unbanned. Yeah. There was a deck idea that I had been brewing for a while. I called it, I haven't played it against you yet. It's called Army of the Dredge. I got you. Uh, the card Army of the Damned. Yeah. And you can actually make the map, see who goes first. You can actually make the mana for it in this deck on turn three, which is silly. Yeah. Okay, so I see a pair of ones, and that's it. <laughs> that is the second worst that you can get in this version. The only thing that you can get worse than that is a high six. So you beat me off of three fives. And, oh, full, full house. house! Yeah, here we go. Sweet! Yeah. Uh-oh, you're on, you're on the play with an effect. Oh, God. All right, what do you say, mate? Uh, we'll keep. Okay, likewise. I'm pretty sure I'll keep. Big boss, go ahead. Let's see what you're working with. Da -da -da -da. It's all gas. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, so land, eugenic, there's becoming men's for the last one. Rancor and Ink Moth shouldn't work except it keeps coming back, so it does work. I gotta hope you stay on one or two lands then. And then I'll draw. Okay. Sixteen? Might as well, right? Life doesn't matter. Well, that's depressing. <laughs> Zero visions? Right? Well, life points. Gotcha, gotcha. We will, we will rephrase that. <laughs> Oh, I hear you, man. I love really fast action. Do you have exosuits and abilities still or not? You don't have exosuits? Um, it's like how I'm going to say not easy. I think what I do here is. The characters that you want to block, you play different characters. But persistence is different. Each of those characters do different abilities. Yeah, because I kind of sit in there and he looks like he won't do it again. Yeah, twice. Yeah, kind of. Top bottom. Which a lot of the time digging out your special life counter. Oh yeah. Oh, I actually brought a poison counter on me. Oh okay. Thank you. Though. We, we'll do both. We'll do both. Not a work. Well, right now I'm not at nine though. <laughs> and at this point, zero is actually zero. Yeah. You know. Uh, did you ever read those threads online where people would say, Max, you can break the space for Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. okay, I think there is one that Let's do it this way. Icker Claw. Here we go. Go ahead. I mean, I don't think most people can do anything in those threads. I don't Halo, well, it happened. I mean, I like Halo, don't get me wrong. It's a great universe. But, uh, okay. It's been, what, 25 or something? Yeah, like only years from now, really. Yeah, and turn. Day, that's all. Yeah. Really yeah, that's another good one. Uh, I might as well tell you there are 21 targets for it in the stack, so it isn't the least likely thing in the world to have. It's really weird. Rank four? Yep. Declare an attacker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Block, trigger, yeah, I'll take two. You have safe houses I'll take four. How short sighted I was. You know, I'm like, I'm like, so there's at least two in here, if that doesn't give it a life.
Which I am not playing. Yeah, you know the drill. Become might vine's blessing. That's not good. That's not good at all. I'll draw. I have played a land already. Oh yeah. Yeah, I see how you're Good to know that didn't actually make a difference though. What a crap. Yeah. So you sack him. Oh. You refer him attacking. Why, Lisa? Why? You are tearing me apart, Lisa. I'm waiting. I'm eight. You're eight? Yeah. What school will you go to? You sack him. Is he third grade? Yes. Okay. Can you face Mike? We're talking a seven power creature. Good combat. Yeah. Well, if I don't block, I die. If I do block, I also die because trigger becomes a nine power creature. Nine minus three is six. Yep. That's it. And two ways to protect it. That's right. That's right. So I was there was a decision I had to make the turn before. It doesn't matter. Either way, I die. <laughs> Either way, I die. Yeah. And on the sideboard. See if we can get there. Yeah. So That's living it. <laughs> I like living it personally as a dredge player. I believe you. <laughs> I definitely, definitely do. It's like, you want a living in? Perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> Suddenly, well, I don't Suddenly, that doesn't seem like such a good idea anymore. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? My deck. You're going to play me in Impact? <laughs> Well, I am Team One Glister Elf, so. <laughs> Come to me. I didn't, even, I, didn't, I didn't even have a turn one Glister Elf last time. I'll keep. Thank, thank goodness for that. Yeah, this seems legit. Okay. You know how to drill? I'll go to 18. And, wow. You'll be at 20. Is this like some kind of. Yeah. yeah. Guttural response. Yeah, that's a card. Double protection. One creature. And this is one of my favorites. All right, two lands. That's all we need. I'll draw my. Mostly why I kept it. I'll draw my card. Yeah. Same visions. Mm -hmm. Guttural response, the ultimate answer to cryptic command. Before combat, cryptic? Uh-uh. You die now. You die. So hard. That's not what she said. I'm terrible and I know it. It's okay. We like you. Yeah. Pastor. Yes. Also, uh, like I said, in the enchantments, of course, I need some trains. Hmm. What a crap. I need to spend money. I need to hold the head, but I need some trains. Okay, see Glistener Elf here, I guess. Oh, fast turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm glad that I deal damage and negatives. Zero visions? Nope. Obviously, I don't want yeah. my top card gates. And so it's just the scry. And they fly technology and magic. I'd 
and uh, of course, because he loves tough item. You know, good strength. Slippery Mogul, do your job. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have a couple of things he has killed. So we bought it like in a battle chest. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's the start of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it was uh, shipped by Royal Mail. Yeah. Necropede. Hi, Necropede. Fast yeah. turn. Swing two. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to block. Uh, okay. No, I'm not going to block. All right. They've been showing like some of these metal carriers and stuff like that, and they've been doing some of the packages, and it's just like, oh my god! How do you people have jobs? Yeah, I saw footage of this guy like tossing a 50-inch TV over a fence. Yeah. I mean, just some of the stuff is unbelievable. But uh, yeah, saying the package was good, and when we got it, you know, it was pretty easy. We, I had to buy some spaces, but I had to make it kind of a bunch of uh, what do you call them? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anyway, I don't read that language. <laughs> French. Yeah. Um, that's it. Last turn. I mean, there are. We're gonna have to block a page. Sometimes find it on eBay. Can't put a slippery bubble with his ability. Yeah, majority of the time, those people. So I'll take it. They're after. Ink moss. That's a card. But I got the base of built. Although. Rain core. Okay. Uh, in response. Yep. Wait, wait, what am I doing? I'm tapped out. And that's why I did it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Mostly. 23. Some of them had chainmail and helmets, but a lot of them were getting Rancor back to hand, of course. Oh, of course. Well, not the necropede, the Rancor. <laughs> Oops. Whoops. Flight Mamba. Flight Mamba is a card. Go ahead. Slide of hand. Return it to my hand. Yes, return it. It's unsummoned for free. Okay. Yes. Why did you play with this guy? Two. Okay. Fourteen. Pass turn. Get my kid there. In the race, I'm currently behind. Two damage from one of my creatures is one damage from one of yours. Ink moth? Yeah. 
it's pretty. That would be pretty cool then. Yeah, it's not like some well, activation. Yeah. Yeah. Rules. yeah. It's freaking priestly, basically. Yeah, I'll bring it up next time. Stuff. Rancor? I didn't know if anybody would be interested in that here. Yeah, I'm, I'm always down to play stuff like that. I, I just drink it too hard. Federal? Malik? Okay. One. I am going to run back with my Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Right. I'm going to do that. 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 I'm going to Yes. <clears throat> Kill me next turn or hold up a blocker or die. We can do this. I believe you. It was a blight mamba. Blight mamba. Mm -hmm. Scary place to be is the mono blue player. Okay. Resolve everything you can, yeah. Um, combat? Okay. You have another Apostle's Blessing, I'm sure. You know I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could tax you, bro. Lifelink is just in general. Um, it's because of phrasing. I'm pretty sure we need to look that up and see if you could run this in hand or if you could find essentially. And that's the only way I've ever been able to figure out what that double lifelink is. You know, have one thing that gives everything lifelink and then this thing. But. Um, and that will give you two instances. Uh, but how do I win if I just take. Because the same logic will apply when I attack. You'll still be able to blessing the creature you have. Same thing. Either way, I lose the creature, and I can't just keep sitting here. So, I'm going to block this, make you cast it, you'll go to two. Yeah. I'll lose my creature. And then I'll just hope for something off the top. And how much trampled over? Two? Uh, oh yeah, there was trampled. That's, that's true. <sighs> so yeah, I'm at three. Did we miss that earlier? I think no, we did. I was blocking. Oh yeah, you were blocking, that's right. Never mind. That would be an interesting yeah, so card. Something that allowed Trample to fly either way. Pass turn. Whatever it is, it's not a creature. If it is, it's one with Flash. Yep. Dude, buddy. Okay. Exactly lethal? Exactly lethal. I don't think I can get out of this one, actually. But, I'm going to snap back, targeting 
Whatever you do, it's got to go to a response. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So obviously, snapback side is sided in. I yeah. sided in a good bit against you. I sided in three better responses. Where are the cards I sided in? To dispel, dispel. <laughs> For four cards like guttering response, but any pump spell of yours ultimately. So I sided in four dispel, four snapback. I saw two snapback. I actually use snapback a good bit against twin. When they actually try to cast the Splinter Twin itself. I actually took out two of the comments. There you go. And put in three good or response. Well, that's fine because I cited out some remands. I cited out three remands. And remand is good against Bacomans, but you took them out. Which I sort of expected, but I also just think that in a deck like yours, where you can cast the spell right back pretty quickly, pretty readily, that remand just doesn't hold as much value. Like, remand isn't good against burn, same logic. Um, cited out. Three remand, a muddle the mixture, you're just too fast. Yeah. Although it is another dispel type effect. Uh, and then spectral flight. Yeah, so uh, I may, the one thing that spectral flight really does, other than speed up the clock a bit, is it takes care of Inkmoth Nexus, but you have enough pump spells, you can get over the creature anyway. Yeah, that was the only thing that I knew that you had in your deck, or possibly had in your deck, that could let you win with the ball game. Well, yeah, so snap, yeah, at the time, because you, you hadn't seen the Rune Changers Pike at that point, right? No, I had. You had? So snapback is my response to Ink Moth instead of uh, Spectral Flight. And generally, especially with novice players, in effect, they try to go for the kill as quickly as possible, just pile on the pump spells. And when they do, especially when you're tapped out and they think you can't do anything, you snap back. Right. And then... They, you just like, granted you might have used two cards, but you may have two for two, two for three, two for four in them. Uh, yeah. So, that's the reason why I do it that way. Yeah. Snapback is, is a, a bit of a silly card, but that's where it sees play. Yeah. It's for those decks. It's definitely always fun to play those people that are new to modern and built and yep. fed because it's easy. So they think it's easy. Oh dear. All you have to do is throw your spells out. And no, it's a little more than that. Yeah, you kind of petered out there, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. That's a weakness to infect, to be sure. You you fire every, it's, you fire all the bullets in your chamber and then you can't reload. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I maybe have that on the mind because of what's playing in the, back, in the background. <laughs> no worries. That's a weird analogy to make, but that's probably why I made it. Yeah. All right. And then... The usual slippery bogle. Like both of us are running low. We're running light on creatures. I think only about twelve. Uh, I'm twelve. I'm sixteen. I have twelve cards. I should say I'm not twelve. I'm twelve when you look at my islands. Having to have the, the. Yeah. Yeah. I run sixteen creatures. Sixteen. Okay. If so you we, include the block nexus. What I had been hoping is that if you didn't have another creature, when I snap back the blighted agent by pitching a card, yeah. pitching the sleight of hand. What I was hoping to do is counter it on the way back down, but you had another creature in your hand anyway, so it didn't. That didn't work out as I had hoped. All right. All right. Best to you, man. Should take a look at it now. Yeah, let's do that. Do you want to do a quick deck deck? Sure. Sweet. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistenrelf. Here with, uh, do you mind if I say, like, do you have a channel name, or do you want me to say your actual name? You can say my name, that's fine. This is TJ Poo, with his, uh, Mono Green Vex deck. Doing a quick, uh, deck tech on it. Uh, because he's a cool guy like that, being gracious and doing that. So, uh, where do we start? Well, it's an effect deck, and I'm T1 Glistener Elf, so let's start off with Glistener Elf. You, you had a little bit of a story behind this one, right? Yeah, so I'd actually, uh, I cut one Glistener Elf in lieu of putting in some more resilient creatures. Uh, but just because we love the turn two kill, oh, yeah. I had to put it back in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it, it's, obviously it's my favorite creature in Magic. Obviously. <laughs> um, but I do very much like that it helps to fight against the, it gets around Spell Snare, it fights the combo decks by just being so fast. Right. Um, Next we have Ink Moth Nexus, which kind of goes the opposite direction. You, you fight control with this baby, right? Exactly. Can't be countered, obviously. Can be tech-edged, but 
you know. My, my favorite thing to do is to activate it after someone has cryptic command my other creatures. Yep. And then hit them with it. That's right. That's exactly right. It's beautiful and modern like that. It's such a versatile. I don't even want to say it's underrated. People know it's good. It sounds good. But it's so versatile. Uh, White Mamba for all of the removal in the format, because after all, Lightning Bolt is the most played card in this format. Right? Exactly. And that is the main reason, because I kept playing people that, pl people that played Delver. Mm. And just because you can wait, hold it in your hand, you don't have to play it immediately. That's right. You wait until you have regeneration mana up, and then put it out on the field. Fair enough. Uh, one of my personal favorites, Iggerclaw Mirror. Now, I may have run a Blight Mamba as a one of every now and then, but Iggerclaw Mirror gets quite a few more slots. Uh, th three is a good number for it. Now that Kologon's Command is running around, it being an artifact is actually a good bit of a liability, uh, especially if, ironically, I Sideboard Hate uh, includes Ancient Grudge, for instance, and other Artifact Hate cards. Oh, yeah. That being said, you know, you can't argue with a creature that gets over the, the, two, two, the two toughness hurdle. Uh, in Legacy, we call that Deathrite Shaman. In Modern, we call that quite a bit more than just that. Well, we don't call it that anymore because ban, but you know. Right. All right. And it's absolutely fabulous with Rancor. It is. This, it's a beauty. I remember one time I actually killed someone with Ikerclaw where I wouldn't have otherwise. Not because of Rancor, but because of Berserk. So. Uh, if I just swing and had the two or three Berserks, I think it was, it was two Berserks, that's right. If I just swing with two, it's four and it's not enough. But then they block, and I Berserk, Berserk, and now it's twelve. So, that was silly. And then your removal creature, Necropede. Yep. Necropede is another one of the really good creatures for people that like to go wide and play Delvers or mm -hmm. Elves. Anything with small creatures that you can two from one of them with that card. This is one of your favorite cards in the mirror, right? Yes, exactly. Oh yeah, because in fact, as you can see, lots of worn toughness and Necropy. I mean, in fact, is played a lot more in this format than I think any other. And so, yeah, Necropy does sort of break the mirror. You know, it's one card to fight, one card like raise the alarm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does good in pretty most situations I play in here. So we take all these one toughness creatures, and we're actually going to kill off of one toughness creatures because of our pump spell package. So I'll get to Gitaxian Probe in just a bit. Um, but because we like, we love turn two kills. This is, I guess, Modern's Invigorate. Except you pay life instead of they gain life, and it's plus two instead of plus four. But it's basically it's the Invigorate slot in the deck, right? Yeah. Oh, oops. Mostly. I mean, it speaks for itself. Uh, if I can make one tiny little note about it, I actually think that Kologon's command is making mutagenic growth good again. Yep. Two toughness, or two, pop, two damage rather, off of it, and mutagenic growth before it finishes resolving. <laughs> Et voila. Exactly. Makes it, makes it much, much better, especially with the popularity of that card. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Groundswell, which to be honest, I was a little surprised to see only as a three of, just because of the eight fetch lands. But because it's not consistently plus four plus four, I can I can certainly see that. I can respect that. Um, yeah, it's groundswell, exactly what it sounds like. Either smaller or bigger than giant growth based on just that. Yep. And the reason why it's not a three up is I added in the four detaxing and pros, and four I up. figured they could can they yeah. could can trip into more of them. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it's good in game one to have the information that can, I might as well say, it. talk about it now then while we're on it. Uh, I like a taxing pro because it gives you the information in game one, and you, I'm assuming, because you play Infect as well, and you can tell me whether this is true or not, you slide it out a lot in, game, in games two and three, right? Yes. It's one of the cards, usually I'll put a three of in for, from the sideboard, mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the cards that usually is the first to go. Sometimes I'll leave two in and I'll do something else, like I'll take out a Become a Mance if it's a, a more slower, grindier game. Okay. That certainly makes sense. Uh, Mind of Old Krosa, uh, you're consistent plus four, plus four, but it doesn't fight Lightning Bolt so well simply because it has to be plus four, plus four on your turn. Um, otherwise, I, I love this card. 
I wish they'd reprinted at some point. They missed, in my opinion, they, and I'm a little opinionated on this, they missed a good opportunity in modern, or did they, they didn't print this in modern, yeah, no, no I didn't think so. I didn't think so. It's, I think it's only ever had the one tricking. I think you're right, unfortunately. And it's an uncommon, unlike most of your pump spells, so. I would venture to guess that it's the most expensive of your pump suite. Yes, it is. And then, uh, oh, find some fast wood. Like, we, we don't see mutagenic groundswell or mite in Legacy. We do see vines of vast wood in Legacy. It's that good. All right. And like, like we were saying earlier, Lightning Bolt is the most popular card in the format, and this punishes them for playing Lightning Bolt in combat. There's a, a game that you and I played where I kept killing your creatures after combat, so because I was worried that if I kill them in combat, you respond with kicked vines, and I just lose on the spot. I got you. Yeah, that has been known to happen. Yeah. And... And it's, it's beautiful when it does happen, obviously. Right. Um, oh, so like we were on about earlier, we have the, uh, the four forests, we have the eight fetch lands to turn on a ground spell just to get our forest out. Uh, also no, deck thinning, which also is deck thinning, yeah. very important when you're trying to win on turn two. You know, this is something that I think I suggested last time, although mine was in the context of Sylvan Scrying. Cathedral of War in a mono green list. Uh, actually, we were just playing Cathedral of Wars against each other. I just realized that. Yep. Uh, Cathedral of War, it's essentially just a free pump spell every single turn. Also helps you to get over the, you know, your one power, one toughness creatures need to get over their itty bitty creatures. And Exalted is one way to go about it. Right. Um, yeah. it's, it's really good as a two love, especially um, in this with so many artifact creatures yep. that you can play colorless mana for. That's right, and weirdly enough, it can turn on your turn two kills more readily. The same is true of Pendlehaven. Pump the creature with one of these, two mutagenic growths, and any other pump spell. Well, not vines, actually, so any other pump spell. Right. <laughs> well, not Rancor, so any other... Oh, I'm sorry. I had to. Right. Um, and well, I guess while we're on it, Pendlehaven? Gotta get that good, good old Pendlehaven in. Um, yeah, what do you... <laughs> You're running two. I, I run two as well, but what was the reasoning for running two, you think? What um, I mind? wanted to make sure that I got one more often than not, but I didn't want three or four of because it's legendary. That's right. And it would have to kill itself. That's true. Um, and I didn't want to get stuck with you know three of them in my opening hand and then be stuck on one, essentially one land forever. Yeah. So I figured two is a good number. I don't hardly ever see both of them in one game. There's a, a number of different ways to run Infect like this, uh, even Mono Green Infect. Um, the way that I described it to you earlier, my friend, is that the more uh, amateur way, I guess, of playing, uh, the more aggressive way, perhaps is the better word, it, to, of playing Infect is turn one, jam my Glistener Elf, turn two, pom pom pom, just try to kill them as quickly as you can. You open yourself up to dying to removal a lot more readily with that. Uh, if it doesn't work, reloading is hard, but cards like Pendlehaven, Cathedral of War, Noble Hierarch, they let you play a, a longer game and conserve those resources in your hand. That's also why I have eight protection spells. Yep. Oh yeah, the, the four Apostles' Blessing are here. Four Apostles' Blessing. This is more than I've ever run on the list, I think. It's offensive and defensive. That's right, it certainly is, and it, it gets the job done. Uh, and the only liability you really have in this deck on it, if you name green, is that Rancor might fall off, but your creature's not dying anyway. Uh, and I'll waddle on about Rancor, I guess. It's exactly what's written on the tin. Uh, this card has been controversial, right? So supposedly this one was supposed to be either green, or one green, or two green. Um, or rather one in green or two in green. Right. And there is a good bit of debate over what it should be. I think Mark Rosewater came out saying if he were designing the card today, it would have been one in green. Uh, well, I can agree with that. Ari Lax, when he ran his bug infect list and did a deck tech for it at a Pro Tour Return to Ravnica, he actually said Rancor was the worst card in his deck. Which kind of blew my mind. It was a card that's good enough that they waited to reprint Rancor until right before Infect was about to rotate. They waited till M13 to give it a reprint. Yeah. Um, when they were supposed to, they were thinking of doing it much earlier. 
Um, just a really good card. It plays, it, it, again, sort of plays the long game a bit, except that unlike Cathedral of War and Pendlehaven, it doesn't save your creature, which I think is the reason why he doesn't consider it to be so good. Your creature doesn't have their toughness improved by it, and so while you may kill their creature, while you may kill them more quickly if they don't have any creatures, and while it's essentially a one mana investment in zero in the future right. for two, four, six, eight power, it doesn't actually save your it doesn't save your creature in the short term. Right. So yeah. in a mono green list when you're not running Simic Infect That's right. with Blinded Agent, which are already unblockable, mm -hmm. it helps you get that extra damage through. That's true. Now it also does have a tiny bit of a non bow with Pendlehaven, but on the turn you cast it, you can Pendlehaven and then cast the Rancor. Yes. You know, having a 4-3 is always nice. Right. Four, it's all, again, it's always nice to have it on Icar Claw Mirror. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Icar Claw Mirror. Uh, even something like Ink Moth Exus can keep reusing the Rancor turn after turn. And yeah, Icar Claw Mirror becoming a 5-3 Trample, that is pretty sick. Even something like Blight Mama that can save itself, it doesn't necessarily yeah. die while it gets the 3 power. And then, I guess we, we only have one left, in the main board at least, to become immense. I've been unsure in my list what the right number is for modern. Uh, two, three, four, I settled on three in my Simic list, and you have only two in your list, which actually, I was thinking it might be more than that, especially with the four probes. Uh, well, four, four probes, eight fetches. I mean, yeah. I can turn it on once, but I can't really turn it on twice. And again, it's like the Pendlehaven. I, I really want to see one per game, but I don't want to see more than one. That's true. Like, more than one in the opening hand looks real bad. Real bad. Um, I think if it were me, for whatever this is worth, I might make it three or four, just dropping Rancor. But both of these are very good for, for different reasons. Yeah, honestly, if I drop a Rancor, I'd probably go back up either Might or Ground Swell. Fair enough. Definitely, definitely fair enough. That's also a respectable position. And now for the sideboard. Um, I was just playing Mono Blue a second ago. Guttural response. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a beautiful feeling, my friend, right? When you counter a cryptic command off this thing. Exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. It feels good for you, it feels bad for me. Our artifact hate is a surprisingly expensive one, but super effective. Well, I say one. We have Nature's Claim as well. There's Creeping Corrosion. Uh, that one's mostly for the affinity matchup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you can make it up to four mana, which with 20 lands is, and four probes, it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. No, it's not very difficult, though. The thing is, is you have to make it to four mana, but if you make it to four mana and you wipe the field, generally you win after that. That's right. That's exactly you right. You just have to trade a few creatures. Uh, dismember, uh, for removal, uh, obviously it comes in in the mirror. Uh, it comes in against Splinter Twin, right? Splinter Twin, anything that runs Spell Sky. Yeah. Um, just the big creature decks. Like, I, I love to use that when I have Rancor on Icar Claw. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It is a thing. Makes sense. On the topic of, uh, of Artifact, hey, I'm going to skip Tormund's script for just a quick second. Um, also comes in in Affinity. Uh, Rex Face. All day, every day. Speaks for itself. Even sees play in, in Legacy Infect List. I certainly run one in mine. And then Tormod's Crypt. Now, one comment that I made to you earlier is that uh, Graveyard Hate is underplayed, I think, in Modern, for whatever reason. And you're playing three Tormod's Crypts. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it works great against Living End. It works really good against any kind of dredge or dredge find, yeah. um, which is the other deck that I play, um, so I know it pretty well. Um, anything that cascades. Um, that's, that's certainly fair. Uh, I also sometimes put it in against uh, Delvers, things that play a lot of Delve creatures, and I'll clear their graveyard so that they can't. I, I just had a bit of an epiphany, just a little bit. 
artifact hate and graveyard hate sort of seem to be reversed between modern and legacy, right? In modern, you have tons of artifact hate because affinity is a big deal, mm -hmm. maybe less graveyard hate. And then in legacy, it's the other way around. Affinity doesn't see much play, but a bunch of graveyard decks do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, there's a lot of decks that get hit, get wrecked seriously by that. And then there are a lot of decks that get hurt just a bit by it, um, but enough that it might eke out a victory for you. A lot of Delve creatures existing in the format right now. Right. Um, a lot of like Snapcaster targets. Yeah, my, my other option would be like Relic of Progenesis, which either one works great. I just, sure. I want something that I can have it out, clear the, like, clear the graveyard, and still be able to cast my opponent's spells. That's um, more than fair. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. And since it's a zero cost, it doesn't interfere with any other of my gameplay. So. That's right. And uh, is there anything else you want to say about this while we're here? No, I mean, it, it, it works really well. It's, it's more budget than the Simic list, so if someone oh, yeah. is new to Modern and they want to build something that's really competitive and super fast, um, Something like this would be great. You're welcome to, you know, make some changes, cut cut a rancor, add another pump spell. If you're not a fan of Necropede like I am, you don't have to have Necropede. You can add another Blight Mamba or Icker Claw. Um, there are other infect creatures that are, you know, really good that you could put in. Viridian Corruptor. Viridian yeah, Corruptor is a great one. Yeah. Um, there are some. Uh, you could always splash another color. Um, and not even not even necessarily go Simic, but if you went Golgari, there are some really good one and two draw, or I guess they're two draw, in fact, um, black creatures out there. There's a Flinzer Mite, there's Plague Stinger, I guess it's much more than Flinzer Mite. Yeah. Um, you can also play a little bit of a control game with cards like Thoughtseize, Inquisition, Abrupt Decay, uh, you can play Dismember anyway, but it makes it easier to play Dismember. Mm -hmm. um, you do have more. You do get some options, but you're probably going to turn less into a all-out deck and more into like a maybe a controlish tempo deck. Right. The thing is, is this deck every game you're going to start out like full put foot on the gas pedal, yep. trying to get there. Yeah. As soon as you see what your opponent's playing. If they're one of those people that that play more of a control matchup and they're going to constantly be able to kill your creatures, yeah. you don't play your creatures. You you wait it out. You wait until you have the mana to protect it. You wait until you have Pendle Haven. You wait until you have Blight Mamba with regeneration mana. Yeah, that's you, exactly right. You you know you do all these things and you play a much more slow game, but eventually they will use up most of their resources. That's right. And all you have to do is hit them once. Because <laughs> by that time you have all the land you need and most of the pump spells you're going to need. And it's just going to be one swing. You and all I, you need is that one swing. That's right. You and I had a nice long war in one of our games. The the wreck, the Blood Moon Walkers. Mm -hmm. Moon Walkers. Uh, where it was something weird like, like, like I don't know, pump spell, terminate, binds, dismember, apostle bless, and it just went on and on like that. Yeah. And he won right after. He won after that. He expended so many resources of mine that he won shortly thereafter. I just had to be patient. That's right. Exactly. I mean, it, it's really easy, especially if you're playing someone that that only runs like one color kind of creature in their deck, like if. Even against someone that plays like Zoo, where most of their creatures are green. Yeah. The Apostles Blessing for green. Ta-da. Pump and go. And then when they're sitting at home wondering what happened, hopefully they'll realize that, hey, Kurt Ape does have a use. Right? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Of course you have to you have to pump in response to your own Apostles Blessing. But that's right, that's right. Yeah, hold priority and then cast your pump spells. That's right. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's really easy to give your creature protection so that they can't block it, and then make it over ten and get the win in one turn. You just be patient. Now, do you think that twenty lands is the right number in your estimation? Um, honestly, sometimes I think you could go lower. Uh, I personally like the the twenty forty split. 
um, especially with all of the uh, fetch lands I have to thin out the deck anyway. That's fair. Um, because your your hit points really don't matter in a deck like this. I think when I look at this kind of list, and I actually sort of reevaluate it, you have 14 green sources. Being Wild Nexus is almost more of a creature to me, and Cathedral of War is almost more of an enchantment to me. Right. Um, and 14 green sources in the opening hand, obviously that's that's pretty good. That's uh, something like that's over 90 percent likely to likeliness to have likelihood rather. Yeah. to have one green source in your opening seven. And one is all you need. That's exactly right. Uh, and Gitaxian Probe helps with that a little bit, but there are some hands where you keep a Gitaxian Probe thinking, well, this could be something. Uh, it's obviously a good card. Sometimes, I admit, I've, I've done it before, I've kept a hand with Gitaxian Probe that was sketchy and shouldn't have been kept, and messed up as a result. Lost the match as a result. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens. Mm -hmm. You just kind of have to feel it out. It looks like... I really like to start the game with two lands. Yeah. Mostly a forest and an ink moth, but mm -hmm. um, I'll take pretty much any two lands, and that's all I ever really need. If you get stuck with a hand with colorless-only sources, you can still play the game. Yes. Um, it looks like Burn would be a good match against this deck. Uh, not just because of, like, the probes and blessings, but also just simply because I think red is sort of the, the kryptonite to infect in modern. Uh, a lot of targeted removal. They don't even have to landfall their searing blades. It's, uh, right. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that's one of the main reasons why I cut one Icker Claw and two mm -hmm. Necropedes to put in the, the three Blight Mamas. That's right. Just to combat things like that with Bolt, Lightning Helix, Searing Blaze, um, all of them. My, you know the red burn stuff that, that is definitely one of the hardest matches and you don't want to use your pump spells to save your creatures that's right right well, you don't want to throw I wouldn't suggest you want to throw your pump spells out too early because then they respond with a burn spell and you might just lose right there right that's that's that, probably that's the match of, you have to play defensively oh yeah now that being said uh, Pendlehaven is your biggest ally because two power is about as big as most of the creatures get and so, even like Monastery Swiss Bear, that's, uh, that's two spells to get them big enough. So, all of your creatures will now trade with Goblin Guy, trade with Eidolon, usually trade with uh, Taylor Swiss Bear. <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry. It's Taylor Swiss Bear. Yeah, um, you could try running Wild Defiance as a one of in like the main or side or both. Uh, to deal with burn if it's that big of a deal, but even then, it's a three mana spell, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And even against burn, um, depending on someone's meta, mm -hmm. I'd highly recommend if you don't have a lot of graveyard people in That's your meta, right. take out the Tormoz crit and put in three Feed the Clans. That's also a, a card. Pump spell and then follow it up with Feed the Clan. Yeah. For ten life, and then after that, you know, once you've gained ten life, you're ahead on the race. Oh yeah. And then, you know, most of the time they'll never see that coming. Most of the Not time, from an impact player. they'll choke and, you know, I can't, I can't win, Ugh. or something like that. So yeah, no, no. In all seriousness, that usually ten life is usually enough to put yourself too far ahead for them to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Plus, it turns on various things like you. At that point, you would be okay using a dismember or using a oh, mutagenic yeah. growth. Or a lot of the times, I'll actually sideboard out the mutagenic growth or the Jataxian probe in a burn match because it's going to wind up killing me anyway. At least the Apostle's blessing will keep my creature alive, that's and right. usually for less life than I'll lose anyway. <laughs> One thing that's come up that you may or may not want to try is that you could replace a fetch land or a forest for a temple, just a one of temple garden. The only thing it does in the main board is it pays for the white if you need it to. I don't know that it's worth it. Uh, it's something that I've seen once. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If it ends up being that much of a deal with burn, then maybe I guess you do it. Um, on the other hand, that could backfire for the same reason. If your only green source in your opening hand is a temple garden, that could that could hurt as well. Mm -hmm. It's just a thought, it's just a suggestion, you two. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, 
thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Feel, hey. free, feel free, YouTube, to uh, leave comments and suggestions at the bottom. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. Yeah. Uh, Jay knows my number, or we can pretty much answer anything you got. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, in the meantime, take care, YouTube. Have a good day.